Um, now we'll move to commence the MPI, and after the first speaker, we'll then interrupt for Senator Seward's valedictory statement. I've received the following letter from Senator Watt. Pursuant to Standing Order 75, I propose the following matter of public importance be submitted to the Senate for discussion. The Prime Minister's statement that it would be very familiar, I think, to many, the reopening plan to get Australia open by Christmas of this year, made in October 2020 in relation to Christmas 2020. Is the proposal supported? It is. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers for today's discussion. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clocks accordingly, and I call Senator Polly. The motion uh, that we're debating today on the MPI, there could not be a more important day to be having this debate. Today has been another heartbreaking day for Australia with 919 cases in New South Wales, 45 new cases in Victoria, nine in the ACT, which has set, unfortunately, a new record of daily COVID-19 uh, for the infections for, uh, thank you, Senator, for, um, for Australia at this time. Now, it is devastating. I was up in my office just a short time ago and I heard that there's been two more deaths in New South Wales. And I guess it's just affected me as I'm sure that um, Senator O'Neill would be feeling this as well, coming from New South Wales, that a, a young mother in her 30s uh, has died and her husband is in the ICU. Now, this is devastating to our country. Too many deaths. Too many people haven't been able to have their vaccination, and we've had a government and a prime minister who is scathing of anyone who would scrutinise their lack of commitment and urgency when they knew from what was happening overseas that there was a crisis coming to Australian shores. They did nothing to ensure that they had adequate supply of vaccines to keep all Australians safe. Now, we've heard in this place today, we heard yesterday, we heard on Monday, the tragedy of those families who were trying to seek out and find access to a vaccine. It's devastating, absolutely devastating. There have been 76 deaths since this outbreak began. There's almost one person a day dying in this country from failing to have access to a vaccine or have had a vaccine and still unfortunately have died. Now we have a Prime Minister who has demonstrated every day this week in the other place, as we have with government senators here, they do not like and will not accept any scrutiny of their failures. They come in this chamber day after day this week trying to justify how they should be so um, bolshy about the fact that there's so many vaccines have been rolled out in the last week or so. Well, I'm sorry, you cannot rewrite Australian history. You have failed the first hurdle as Prime Minister of this country to ensure the safety and the health of every Australian. That was your first job, protect people's health, to protect the economy. Both of those critically important to every Australian. But you also have failed. Under the Constitution, we know, and you know as well, that it was your government's responsibility to ensure that we had safe and secure quarantine for people in this country, for people coming home. We've also learnt today that the Ruby Princess crisis Oh, the federal government and Mr Morrison, he wiped his hand. No responsibility. Don't look at the Commonwealth government. No, no, no. But it was, in fact, hidden away, but it's been uncovered, the report that clearly lays the blame partly, I say only partly, on the federal government. This is the same federal government and the chief minister health um, adviser at the time when the Ruby Princess broke out in my home state of Tasmania down on the northwest coast, which um, our whip here 
Senator Urquhart would remember very clearly coming from that community when there was allegations that there was an outbreak because the, a, party, a party was being held by doctors from that very hospital, from the Burnley Hospital. These are the same people who come in here day after day trying to rewrite what has really happened in this country, and that is we've had a Prime Minister who has failed on every single hurdle to provide security of Australians' health, security of their jobs, security of our economy. We don't forget these things any more than Tasmanians don't forget that it was their chief health adviser, now the secretary of the Department of Health, that made those outlandish allegations at the time of hard-working, dedicated health workers and doctors at the Burnie Hospital. Well, you can come in here each and every day, have speaker after speaker in this debate that will try and rewrite history and blame the Labor Party for all the lockdowns. What have we seen this week? The Prime Minister who does not like any scrutiny, no scrutiny from him, no responsibility, no crisis here. Look the other way. Well, we're not going to allow that to happen because we are going to remind you each and every day of the warnings that you had from what was happening overseas that you failed to protect older Australians in this country. We still have the same health minister who has failed again on every hurdle to ensure the health and safety of Australians in this country. Every single issue and crisis that we've had in aged care still have, with aged care workers not being vaccinated, we still have a crisis in the disability sector. We still don't have uh, workers fully vaccinated in either aged care or disability. We've heard today from Senator O'Neill about the travesty that's happening in New South Wales, Western New South Wales, in that community, which I'm very familiar with, the crisis there with First Nations people. This is outrageous. The warnings were there. But what's happened to the health minister? Absolutely nothing, because it's so typical of this government. Not our responsibility, not our fault. We are now rolling out the vaccines. We're rolling them out so everything's all right. Let's not worry about those people who are dying. Every day there's an Australian who is dying needlessly. And it really doesn't matter how old they are, whether you're in your 80s or your 70s, in your 90s, or if you're in your 30s or in your 20s. These deaths could have been avoided if this government and the Prime Minister had done his job and ensured that we had sourced enough vaccinations. That has been the fundamental problem of why we have lockdowns, why Queensland's gone into lockdown, why New South Wales, the ACT, Victoria. The health, the mental health impact on our community is going to last for a long, long time, and we won't see the full impact of that for some time. And we have raised our concerns today in this place in relation to the lack of vaccines available to children from 12 upwards. These are children in disability, those people with disabilities themselves, with those teachers that are teaching children with severe disabilities. I know only too well of a case in Orange where they tried, the special education teacher tried to get a vaccine. And what was she told all last week? You'll have to wait till next year. You'll have to wait till next year. That is outrageous. That is outrageous. We should be doing more. The Prime Minister of this country has failed, as I said from the outset. He's failed to take responsibility. He doesn't like to have any scrutiny. This is not going to go away. And every death that we have in this country, we should be reminding ourselves and reminding the government and particularly the Minister for Health, the Minister for Aged Care and the Minister for Prime Minister himself, we should have prevented these. We could have prevented these. We failed our duty of care. That's what this Prime Minister has done. He should be looking at his own performance, his own 
failings instead of looking, as he normally does, to blame everyone else. There's no crisis here. I'm not taking any responsibilities. And if I keep saying that over and over again, I know I'm going to believe it, and maybe the Australian people will believe it. Well, I don't believe they do believe it, because my office has been inundated because of the concerns that our economy is having in the tourism sector, yes. in every sector of hospitality. Yes. We have been hit by the fact that we've got three states in full lockdown, Queensland, New South Wales. Victoria and now the ACT. That's having an impact on my own community in Tasmania. We feel it. We want to get out of these lockdowns. We want to get back to our Australian way of life, but that responsibility still rests with the Prime Minister, who isn't up to the job of leading this country. Thank you. It being after 5 p.m., pursuant to order, we interrupt debate on the MPI to proceed to valedictory statements for Senator Seward. And I call Senator Seward.